Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kaya Perico Highest Guide. In this in-depth guide, I'll be going over all the setups that you need to do in order to complete the Kaya Perico Highest quickly, effectively, and with the most money possible as a solo player, including the Elite Challenge. If you want to know how to get the high started, I've made a separate video on that, so check that out first. But without further ado, let's get started. First up, we will cover some basic tips and tricks that will simply will be useful to know and will be good practice while doing the heist. Bring snacks and armor to heal yourself up in a hairy situation. If you need a good weapon, then the special carbine will be your friend. And while you're at ammunition, grab yourself a couple of rebriefers for the finale. You can do everything in an invite only session. No need to worry about the Harry Potter broomstick fan club. The first time you will do the heist will be the same for everyone. You will have Madrazo's files as a primary target and will not be able to change that. After completing the first heist, some stuff will change. You will scope out the island as a drug smuggler rather than the tour manager and you start your first mission by flying to Caipa Rico rather than going to LSIA for it. Also, after completing the first heist, the cost of fast traveling in your submarine will go down to $2,000 instead of $10,000. Guides on starting missions for both of the versions can be found in the Kai Perico Heist playlist linked in the eye in the top right of your screen. Speaking of your submarine, the only thing that you have to buy in order to play the heist is the submarine itself. But if you want to save yourself a lot of hassle, then I highly recommend buying the Sparrow. This is a very quick helicopter that can also be upgraded with homing missiles to make your life a lot easier. Reason being is that you can always walk up to it inside of your submarine and be in the air immediately and also immediately teleport back into your submarine instead of having to land your helicopter on the submarine then get out and then get into the submarine. If you don't have the money for that then you can also try to use a different helicopter and position your submarine near land so you can land your helicopter and then request your dinghy to go to your submarine. Bonus points if you have a buzzard and spawn that from your CEO menu. But the Sparrow is arguably the best option here so if you can get yourself a Sparrow make sure to do so. The heist also has a hard mode available. The nice thing is that you can keep doing this back to back. All you need to do is host another heist as soon as you get a text message from Pavel telling you that you can do it again. After this text message you will have 48 minutes real time, which is one in-game day, to get back to the submarine and start a new heist. You don't have to do anything else if you don't want to, once the heist is started and on hard mode you will be fine. There's two ways you can recognize that you're playing the heist on hard mode. First up you will get a confirmation screen asking you if you want to play the heist on hard and then secondly your heist planning board will change color from orange to a darker red. And what's the difference in hard mode compared to normal mode? That that's pretty simple. You will get a 10% increase in payout for your primary target, no extra lives, guard vision cones will be a little bit bigger, and you will get one more fingerprint to do during the fingerprint cloner section inside of the finale. And before you ask, according to my testing, secondary target payouts will stay the same. Secondary targets and points of interest are also not worth scoping out before you do the finale. You can find these items either way, and having to go to Kuiper Rico, dodge all the guards, and then find what the secondary loot is, is in my opinion pretty pointless. The targets will not change until you do your next heist, neither will the location, because they always have a set location. This also applies for the first mission where you scope out the primary target. This is honestly the only scoping out you should be doing on Kaya Rico Island. It will save you a bunch of time if you just simply only focus on scoping out the primary target and just let these secondary targets for what they are and just pick them up and go to their location inside of the finale. Sure, there's a chance that there won't be a secondary target in a certain location, but most of the time, from my experience, it always is there, unless you get really unlucky, which is pretty unlikely, especially because there's two or three different locations you can grab stuff from. Speaking of secondary target payouts, the order of value is as followed. Cocaine is the most valuable, then followed by arts, weed and cash. And obviously there's also a safe, which will not take any sort of bag uses at all. Yes, gold does exist too and is the most valuable, but it's always locked behind doors that's only unlockable for two players. Considering bag usage and the amount you could carry, this will result into the following results. If you were to take two paintings with you, you will get an additional $350,000. If you get two stacks of cocaine, you will get $440,000. Two stacks of weed will result in $300,000, but you will have only 80% bag usage, with at least 20% for cash, weed or coke. Now this breaks down pretty simple. 
The difference isn't very huge. Obviously, cocaine would be the best option to pick, but I personally wouldn't really go out of my way for an additional $13,000 at most. But of course, this does mean that if you have the choice between cash, weed and cocaine that is right next to you, then obviously picking cocaine will give you a few extra bucks. As for primary targets, these are as followed. Tequila will give you $900,000 on normal and $990,000 on hard. The ruby necklace will be 1 million on normal and 1.1 million on hard. Bearer bonds will be 1.1 million on normal and 1.21 million on hard. The pink diamond will give you 1.3 million on normal and 1.43 million on hard. And the sapphire panther will give you 1.75 million on normal and 1.9 million on hard. The sapphire panther though is likely going to be the same as the diamonds inside of the casino. This will be linked to event weeks that will probably happen every couple of months since the value of them is much higher. If you want to know when these happen then stay tuned to the channel. While there is a way of cancelling your heist and then starting a new one to get a different primary target this is simply not worth the time. Mainly because the difference isn't that huge and you will spend a pretty lengthy time doing the first scout mission again and thus it will just simply not be worth the risk. So yeah, while the tequila bottle wouldn't be the best thing to get for a difference of like $100,000 for the next best option, it's simply not worth the 5 to 10 minutes you would spend doing the first mission again. You have to consider the fact, especially at the second time and beyond, you're going to have to fly all the way from sometimes even Polito Bay to Cayo Perico, which in itself will take you at least 5 minutes. Right, now let's move on to the set of missions. First up, we need to have your submarine in the best location possible. Your two best options are Vespucci Beach and Elysian Island. My personal preference goes to Elysian Island as it's where the most missions will be around. Vespucci Beach, however, will be much easier to use for those that don't have a sparrow available to them. Each of the set of missions has a total of three variations to them and some of them can be made easier with some of the tips that I have for you. So let's begin. For the approach vehicles, you have two options that I would personally consider to be the best, the Kasatka and the Longfin. In terms of the easiest and most hassle-free prep mission, I would personally say that this will be the Longfin prep mission because of the simplicity of it. However, the Kasatka prep mission isn't that difficult either, but it has a risk of you being spawn trapped by helicopters if you happen to die in the submarine and you can't get a clean getaway. Let's start off with the Kasatka prep mission. For this one you want to fast travel your own submarine to the location of the mission. Then drive your submarine next to the submarine you need to enter, get out of your submarine and then get into the submarine of the mission. As soon as you enter the submarine make sure to take an immediate left and don't go down the ladders so you'll be on the exact floor you need to be at for finding the solar jammer. It's typically in the location I'm showing off though there is a chance of a different spawn but I haven't really seen that happen all that often. Once you found the solo jammer, make your way out and then go back to your own submarine again and job done. The Longfin prep mission has three different locations, but the mission is always going to be the same. Go here, steal a trailer with a truck, go to the docks. The game will spawn you trucks you can use in order to complete this mission, but the locations of them aren't shown until you get close to the location you need to be at. But of course, I'm going to show you all the truck spawns for each location. Vespucci, La Mesa, and Vinewood. You can also just grab a truck from the street or even use your own Phantom Wedge if you have one. Also, losing the cops? Easy. You just need to eat a sticky ball for breakfast and respawn. And like your Uncle Larry after 5 shots of whiskey, the police is nowhere to be found anymore. And in case you were wondering which of the two approach vehicles is quicker in the finale, the long fin in my experience is slightly quicker. But the difference in them is very minimal and really it just comes down to personal preference. I personally think from an overall prep missions point of view, the long fin will be the best option. Mainly because you can just stay in Los Santos with your submarine and you won't have to fast travel to Pulido and back to Los Santos for example. Which in the long run will save you a little bit of time but obviously this again comes down to personal preference. Especially newer players will have a much easier time with the long fin mission. Next up the safe codes. This mission will only be available when you have the bearer bonds or the madrazo files as a primary target. The mission will always be the same and located in the casino at the same apartment. 
If you are a penthouse owner, you can save yourself a bit of time by simply landing on the roof terrace and entering the elevator to be instantly on the right floor. If you don't own a penthouse, you have to go to the parking garage first, then grab a keycard and then you will be able to get to the right floor. The difference is very minimal. Once you're there, you have two options. Either shoot the guard without alerting the guards inside and still get spotted, or shoot the two guards and alert the guards inside. Yes, stealth mechanics in GTA Online do work as intended. Once you're inside though, it's pretty straightforward. Just kill the head of security and then start filling in his pockets to get what you need. He can spawn in two different locations as far as I'm aware, which is either at the location shown in the video or in the bar area. You don't have to worry about actually seeing him. There will be a giant red arrow pointing to his head like, hey, this is the guy, get him. The prep mission that replaces safe codes is the plasma color prep mission. If you get either the pink diamond, tequila, ruby necklace or the sapphire panther. The mission itself isn't difficult at all. Go to the location, take a picture of the planning board, kill some dudes and then grab the plasma cutters. The only two tips I can give you is that you can use explosives without any issues because the bag cannot get destroyed. Trust me, I tried. And that you need to make sure that you're not too close to the planning board when you take the picture or else it won't count. And of course also make sure that you send the picture to Pavo or else it will all be a waste of time. The fingerprint cloner prep mission allows you to go to the warehouse undetected, but as soon as you shoot the first guy, the others will notice and start shooting you. So long story short, don't bother with stealth. The only cameras that you should destroy are the ones at the archive. No need for suppressed weapons, any gun will do. Destroying these cameras will prevent enemies from coming after you after you leave the archive, which will save you a little bit of a headache, which is never a bad thing. The Cutting Torch mission is actually pretty cool and has a neat little feature that you can use to prevent any hassle. There are three locations for this mission and each of them have a hard hat available for you to wear. If you do wear this hard hat, then you will be able to walk around the construction site without any problem and just take your time finding the Cutting Torch without any guns needing to be fired. If being Bob the Builder isn't your style, then you could still decide to turn into the Terminator as per usual. Both will do. Just find the cutting torch in one of the boxes highlighted with the green arrows pointing on them and pick it up to deliver it to your submarine. But what about the explosive prep mission? Waste of time, let's move on. For the weapons loadout, we are once again on a personal preference type of situation. Personally, I recommend that you pick up the Conspirator loadout because it's a consistent assault rifle that has good range. The other loadouts won't be as good in my opinion aside from maybe the Crackshot loadout due to the fact it has a sniper rifle and an AP pistol. Don't try to body shot anyone with a sniper rifle though, you'll spend half the highs trying to kill just one guy. As for the missions, there are two different types of missions, each with three different variations. Mission type 1 I will call the office missions. There are three different locations and involve going there, killing some dudes and grabbing the weapons. A quick tip I can give you is to land on the roof and also exit through the roof to avoid any further unnecessary murder as well as saving yourself a bit of time. Mission type 2 is a bit more annoying, but luckily thanks to Smash Crash's amazing map that he made in paint in 3 minutes, we know where the helicopter is going. All jokes aside for a second, the mission involves you following a Matterweather helicopter to one of three possible locations. These locations are showing on screen. You can actually recognize where the helicopter is going by looking on your map, which I will also show. Once you figure that out, you can just simply fly there and take out all the enemies before the helicopter even arrives. But make sure not to destroy the helicopter before it becomes an enemy. If you don't, then the mission will fail. Also, be careful. The Valkyrie will kill you in one shot, so take cover. Also, make sure to buy the suppressors if you're planning on making it out alive during the finale. And then there are the disruption missions. Having done some testing, the only one that I would find somewhat useful is the weapons disruption prep mission, as this will reduce the weapons from the military rifles to pistols and machine pistols. However, the enemies will still be very accurate, so unless you're planning on going loud, this one is going to be useless. The armor prep mission serves no purpose, because the guards do not wear any helmets whether you do the armor prep mission or not. And since the helicopters that come after you when you get spotted are laughable, that prep mission would also be a waste of time. And so we arrive at the grand finale. For the approach vehicle we will pick either the Longfin or the Kasatka. 
For the infiltration point we will pick the main dock for the long fin and the drainage tunnel for the Kasatka and the entry point will be the drainage tunnel. Escape point will be the main dock. The time of day I personally set today because it will make it easier to watch the video. The only difference between day and night is the guard towers will be able to spot you easier during the day. And since we will not encounter any of them, these really won't matter at all. This will only come into play when you take a different route or approach. And now it's time for the finale and just run past everyone and not shoot anyone because that's just how easy the finale really is. Pay attention to what I'm doing on screen for the route and the only real noteworthy guards that you need to kill are the ones that are highlighted with the red cones. If you kill one of these guards there is a chance that they will drop a key which you can use to unlock a door making your life even easier. Two of these guards will be on the ground floor and the last one will come down from the office down the stairs. So pay attention to what I'm doing on screen so you don't get any surprises. If neither of these guards drop the key, then there's a chance that this guy over here will also spawn the key as well. And once you have acquired the key, you want to make your way up to the office and then loot the vault or the two paintings, depending on what you looted during your scoping out mission. Once you looted the vault and potentially the two paintings on the wall, you can make your way to the elevator and start doing the fingerprint minigame. Now I've done a video on this to make this super easy, which I will leave in the playlist that I've linked before. What you can also do to make this even quicker is by looking up what the previous layer of your fingerprint was and then basically going one more to the right. Rise and repeat until you got all of them done. From my experience, it seems that the bottom fingerprints typically don't really change and you don't really have to mess with them all that much, especially the first few of them. So that way it will be quicker, but if you're someone who still is new to the fingerprints, then the method I've linked in the eye in the top right of your screen is definitely going to be the much easier bet. You have plenty of time, especially with this route for the Elite Challenge, so don't worry too much. If you're using the Plasma Colorless to either the Pink Diamond, Necklace or Tequila Bottle, what you want to do is you want to keep your bar inside of the red. The best way to go about this and for me to explain it is essentially like refing a car, which in plain English just means that you constantly just press the button for a very brief moment and then go again. And just basically keep going like that so the bar stays in the red and you won't touch the very edge of the bar thus your plasma cutter will overheat if you do so you'll lose a few seconds but it's not really the end of the world really once you have acquired your primary loot you want to make your way to the door on the left where you will be greeted with another fingerprint scanner after you've done this fingerprint stuff you want to make your way to this door where you go through up the stairs to the right up the stairs again and then you can just simply make a dash to the main door just stay on the right a bit like i am doing and then just simply go to the door and press the appropriate button to trigger the cutscene when you've done that you've made it out of the compound stealthy and it's time to make it to the main docks once you made it out of the compound there will be a guard waiting for you while not really paying attention to you with a bike of course being as nice as we are we will take this bike and use it to our full advantage Upon driving towards the exit, you will see another three guards, so try shooting them either from your bike or just get off your bike and shoot them that way. You will have a pretty short but long enough moment for the second guard to be like, oh no, I'm getting shot, and then you can still shoot him in the head pretty easily. After shooting those guys, you want to make your way to the exit and take out this camera to make sure you don't get spotted and just follow what I'm doing on screen. Also for this one, don't try to go too fast. You gotta be careful for those pesky trees that sometimes like to knock you off your bike. Just follow what I'm doing on screen and you should be fine. Once you are in the main docks area, it will come down to basically checking two spots for loot. You have a total chance of five spots that can give you some loot, so if you're wondering about the garage door, this one can only be opened with two players. So for that reason, it's probably not really worth it. Once you're inside one of the locations of the secondary targets, then just simply do what I mentioned before by grabbing the appropriate amount of loot. For me, it's really impossible to tell you what to do here because you will have a different secondary loot than I've had in my attempts of the heist. After you looted the second batch of secondary targets, you can just make your way to the boat after you kill these two guys and then just simply drive off. There isn't really any need to kill the two guards on the side because the elite challenge doesn't require you to make it out completely stealthy. But if you want to, then kill these two guys first before you get on the boat to make it out completely silent. And after that, you have done it. 
the elite challenge was completed in a very short amount of time you should have plenty of time to spare so if you're a newer player who really just wants to kind of take their time with it and is afraid of messing up you have enough time the elite challenge isn't really that difficult just simply do what i've been doing on screen and you should be totally fine if you have any further questions or additional tips and tricks then make sure to let us know in the comments down below i do want to give an enormous shout out to my wonderful community on twitch as well as on discord for coming together and basically be coming up with the most effective strategy for this heist it's been a great joy to come together and just really shape this heist and basically breaking down in three days to what is now effectively the most effective way of making money as a solo player good times indeed but with all that said and with all that done that was it for this one thank you also very much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed or found it useful subscribe for more and if you really like what you saw make sure to become a member like all the lovely members on screen Thank you again for watching and I'll see you all later.